Hey guys. So here's what we've got going on today. I got a master built two door self contained freezer that has a leak in the condensing coil. It's just a little tiny leak right in one of the, the elbows on the side of the condenser. I was here last week because they were complaining that it wasn't maintaining temperature. So I got out here last week. I found the evaporator was frozen over. It wasn't encased in ice. It wasn't a defrost issue. Uh, but, um, you could tell that the frost was starting to build up and starting to encase the coil. It had blocked off most of the airflow at the back at the return of the, of the evaporator. So I let it thaw for a day. I came back, uh, powered it on, let it run for about 45 minutes. And then I attached my gauges and found the system was low on charge. So I pressurized it with some nitrogen, swept the entire thing with my leak detector. And I found a little tiny leak in the condenser. So, at the time, I wasn't able to film anything because this is a retail location and they have a, a lot of foot traffic. So today, I don't know if I'm going to film much. I might have to just film stuff and then do some uh, voiceover stuff to make it make some sense. But it looks like it could be a, kind of a fun job. So I'm going to try to get as much on film as possible and uh, bring you along for the ride as much as possible here. All right. So we'll see you on the inside. All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. So right down here is the condensing coil that's leaking. I'm gonna pressurize it with nitrogen just to re-verify the leak, but when I was here last time, I marked it with a paint marker. Right there, we see my little paint marker. That's the elbow it's leaking from. It's leaking from the top section on the back side. Like I said, I'm gonna pressurize it and just show you, see if I, if I can show you, anyway, where it's leaking from. So it looks like all we got to do is probably heat it up, add a little bit of silver to it. I'm going to swap out that dryer, put a better service port in there. I'll probably just repipe that that elbow back there. So make it a little bit easier on myself. All right. Nitrogen. This will be a better angle here. Now it's not a big leak by any means because the system wasn't flat when I got here. Can't seem to get this lighting correct here. I know it's hard to see, but our leak is right there. Just a little tiny guy. So, probably just hit that with a torch for about one second. We'll be able to seal it up in a matter of seconds, so. Alright guys, right now it's just got nitrogen in it from my initial leak check, so I'm going to blow this nitrogen charge, and then we'll seal this up, replace that filter dryer, and then repressurize it and see where we stand.
All right, as you can tell, I got my new service port brazed in, new filter dryer. I ran out of acetylene, so I have to get that replaced. We're up to 150 some PSI. I'm gonna valve it off, go around front, and check for leaks at that little tiny elbow. All right, doesn't appear to be leaking any longer. Looks good. I'm gonna let that sit under pressure for a while just to be sure we got everything taken care of. All right guys, well, it looks like I spoke too soon looks like either I have created another leak or I found another leak on the front side of this elbow. So let me see if I can squeeze any more acetylene out of that tank and uh, I'll have to put some more heat on this. All right guys, it looks like we got her sealed this time. If it'll focus right there. Yeah, I ended up just heating it up and just laying a half a stick of solder on there just to make sure I got everything sealed up. So I'm going to let it sit under pressure for a little while, make sure everything's sealed, and then we'll start pulling a vacuum. All right, so we've been sitting at about 172 PSI for going on 15 minutes now. So I believe we are nice and tight and everything is sealed up. I'm going to go ahead and blow this charge, hook up the uh, vacuum pump, and start cleaning up some of my mess here. Well, we've been holding at about 380 microns for roughly 10-15 minutes. So. Let me get my 404 hooked up. We're gonna weigh in our charge, turn it on, and see what kind of operating pressures we get. First, I need to zero our scale out. Now I have my hoses hooked up. I have my valves closed, because what I like to do is I like to run refrigerant into my hoses first before I introduce it into the system, like so. See, so right now, my manifold set is full of refrigerant, all the way up to my service ports. So my entire gauge set, hoses and everything, took about two ounces of refrigerant. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out. And then I'm going to weigh in my charge, which is three pounds, six ounces, 58 ounces altogether. Three pounds, six ounces, right into my high side. Just about three pounds, six ounces. Shut my high side off. There we go, three pounds, six ounces. All right, now I did have to dump a bunch of that into my suction side, which means I probably have liquid sitting on 
my compressor in it or near it. So I'm going to let that settle, let the system sort of equalize before I turn it on. But in the meantime, I can get some of this stuff packed up. Not too bad, went from 77 to 25 now. Let's see what kind of pressures we got. Looks like we're doing pretty good. 108 degree condensing temperature, negative 15 degree evaporator. Our set point is negative 10. So about negative 15, negative 20 on my evaporator is fine. Cool. Looks like we are just about all wrapped up here, guys. Almost. Now we're all wrapped up. All right, guys, we're just wrapping up here. I hope you liked the video. It was uh, a little bit of a simple repair, I suppose, but uh, nonetheless, I'm sure there was something to uh, learn from it. If not, just uh, kill some time and watch me work, I suppose. But uh, the job went smooth, about as smooth as I could have hoped. When I left, the uh, box temperature was down to one degree, set point was negative 10, so it was well well on its way to reaching that negative 10. Pressures were, were right on. I think my evaporator temperature was negative 15. Condensing temperature was 111. So it was right there, right where I wanted it to. I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, so yeah, hope you guys liked the video. If you get a chance, hit that like button. Subscribe as well while you're at it. 